The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Global Market Pulse. With your host, John Logan. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648, internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, John Logan. Hi guys, welcome back to the show. Hope you had a good holiday. It was a nice stretch there with a couple of midweek Christmas days and New Year's days, which is uh, <coughs> always nice when it comes to uh, getting lazy. So... Let's see, my audio, audio is choppy, I'm being informed. How is it now? Okay. Okay, just uh, getting a little audio check here from the guys at TFNN starting the new year. Okay. All right, so, you know, a lot of things happened the last couple of days. Uh, right after, you know, the first of the year, we had a pretty decent sell-off here. Um, in the S&Ps, and now the euro is starting to cave in even worse. And, you know, the Greece thing is out there. It's been out there for a while. I don't have to tell you guys that from a fundamental standpoint. Um, I've been really bearish on the euro since about 135.52. And why? Uh, way back then, just to give a little bit of history lesson, we had that weekly close below, go back and retest, if, if you're seeing my screen right now. Um, and as that had really foretold that it's okay to be short, not okay to be long on a long-term basis, we've had some some little areas, obviously, that uh, things don't go in a straight line, straight down, or straight up, for that matter. But as we had kind of moved up a couple of times, a little bit of technical damage on the dailies, and that's okay with the long-term trend. We've had that close below retest and actually a really nice retest of these weekly unfair lows at 125.74 uh, last month, actually. Um, and we were just licking our lips when we saw that because, again, it's still, you know, trading the trend down, trading the trend down. And we, we want to always stick with, if you can, the long-term trend, the intermediate-term trend, and try to trade inflection points, let the shorter-term time frames regulate that type, type of trade down. Um, and uh, I was actually looking at Nadex last night, looking at the euro um, you know, this has been a, you know, just an all over the place product uh, the last, you know, 24, 48 hours, um, or 24 hours actually in the last in the last week, uh, yesterday being Sunday. But um, as this thing has trailed down, they're really, you know, and there's those little bit of disturbances back in the 128 area that we talked about some technical damage, kind of orienting the stops around there. But um, again, you got the that 125.74 area and then the confirmation getting back down to these daily unfair highs. And uh, now what do you do? Um, we've been kind of staying away from any divergent type, um, I, I guess you could call it uh, indicator, I guess. Um, as we look at some of our other indicators, Navigator, for instance, specifically down below, you know, we had lower lows hitting here and then kind of higher lows hitting on Navigator. We were, we were just ignoring that. That's, that's usually something we pay attention to just on that one indicator alone. We've got about 15 indicators that we look at. But as we look at that, we had just basically said, you know, we're going to probably ignore this because the overhanging fundamental reasons um, combined with the technical pattern on the weekly uh, have really, you know, been something that it's been great for those things to work together, for instance. But we've also had, uh, you know, a situation, you know, in the, in the you know, like the Greece thing out there, the Italy thing out there, the... You know, the, just the general problems of Europe. And when we look at these divergent situations, we, we tend to not say, okay, it's time to buy in that instance when we have a divergence. It's, it's to look at these charts with a little bit more suspect eyes. It doesn't, you know, mean that, you know, hey, this is a 100% total victory, go the other way. Uh, we had a little bit of that right there. But, again, you know, these are, these are just kind of, hints of things, but we were, we were pretty much ignoring those hints right on the, on the euro on the way down. So again, what do you do now? Um, 
you know, this is the type of thing, you know, Greece possibly having the problems that they're having, and then, you know, Germany saying, oh, screw it, you know, we don't care if they leave. This has been a problem since day one. Um, you know, this is the type of thing that people just, you know, there, there might be some runs on banks in, in Greece. I would assume that that's going to happen. If I was sitting in Greece and I had, you know, a chance to get my money out of the bank in, in euros, um, I'd probably be the first one there. That's going to cause some more fundamental news flashes and splashes, and and this euro may actually deteriorate more. We're going to have to pay attention to it. But right now, um, you know, just as I was playing around with this on Nadex last night, you know, the the overhanging leverage is absolutely still to the short side, and um, you know, there's going to be some long trading opportunities. Here's our 60 minute, and I usually don't go down to time frames this short, but if you look at this and look at you know what's going on here in the scanner, and I've got our currencies up right now. This is our task profile scanner. I'm looking. I'm looking at the euro, and if you look at this and just kind of step back and say, you know what, things are not on sale yet because, you know, look at all these reds. Look at the amount of bars that we've been below the 240 minute lately. Obviously, the latest run on the weekly 11, and then the 60 minute. I mean, that's kind of why I brought this up. You've got the inflection points sitting there. You've got. 119.28, however you want to, if you can take a snapshot of that, you can see the whole thing. Um, and when we look at our landscape view of this, you know, there's, <laughs> there's, uh, there's not a lot of reasons to start even trying to pick any battles down here. Namely, it would be at the bare minimum getting back, in my opinion, above this 119.71 area. So, again, you know, Things on our lows go lower. We talk about that all the time. And, you know, the euro is not immune to that concept. So, again, folks, you know, this 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 could get a lot uglier and, and not pay attention to what I just said on the on the profile situation. The the British pound has finally and and this has been the coolest situation here. Me and Eddie were looking at this before. We actually did a, a show and focused on this for God, I don't know, a good good 20 minutes um, just looking at these charts. We had, the, again, the close below on the weekly, similar to that close below on the 135.52 in the euro, um, and then the retest back into that, which was the powerful trade 156.05, and we're, you know, 400 pips lower than that right now in a matter of a week, and here's the daily situation, and this was really, really neat <coughs> that we've, you know, had this British pound, you know, trade off that inflection point up at that 156 area. Excuse me, let me pull up those numbers again. One fifty six oh five is the unfair lows from the weekly. And when we got into that rattling around, we obviously went up a little bit higher, one fifty seven sixty two, but we used that DMZ and then that inflection point down below one fifty six twenty five coincide with that 156.05 and always looking at this trading it from <clears throat> since we never got a close above on the weekly those are the powerful setups we've used these inflection points to try to leverage again the short side being that we've tried to eliminate the long side so it's okay to be short not okay to be long and this is our daily latest inflection point 155.91 let's just call it 156 that we leveraged off of and then that was the uh the coinciding with the 156.05 on the weekly and giving you a pretty clear-cut situation to pay attention to here. Here's the 240s on the British pound. These are all kind of so-called Greece-related. And uh, we're going to take a look at the dollar in a little bit, but but my goodness, I mean, these are... I don't know if these are historic moves, but they're pretty serious moves. Uh, and here's the 240. So you've got 152.48. I'm going to pull this back up in the scanner. Taking a look at currencies. The reason I'm talking about currencies, pretty much not exclusively today, is you know when you when you're trading, you want to find something that's that's moving. Um, when you get a lot of good bang for your buck, you can put on some really good risk reward scenarios in Nadex. I've been really looking at that lately, and obviously uh, trading some options around in general around some of these currency plays, i.e. Uh, but, you know, just a simple like, options can get really complicated. You can make them super complicated. But as we look at a 
you know, a simple strategy, which I'm a big fan of when it comes to trading options um, against underlying, you know, going long, or excuse me, going, um, if you're going to go long, going long the currency against uh, going long in the money puts. Therefore, you kind of got something, if you're, if you're thinking about picking a battle on the long side, you've got something that's basically covering your insurance almost for free, but you've got to have a bigger move, and you're not going to pay a lot for that uh, volatility premium by buying in the money puts against that long currency position. <clears throat> now, that's looking for an expected move up, but as we look at the, as we look at the pound um, you know, we've got reds across the board there, and that 60-minute inflection point up top is 152.79 and uh, 152.48 on the 240s. So you, you get an idea, just like the euro, that we really haven't had any reasons or possibilities to go long lately. And there's a 60-minute, and there's a 240. Okay. We've got to look at at the dollar before we go to break here um we've been up we've been above 92 this morning which has been just literally amazing and at some point i think tom would even agree with this this is probably going to come home to roost and it's starting to with the u.s stock market you know this dollar at some point this is going to be a negative connotation um it's kind of a you know somewhat of a safety situation now i don't really think otherwise with this on the dollar right now but at some point and we don't have any again we've been talking about being long the dollar for a long time actually since around the 81 area 81 and a half here's the daily situation i just pulled it up nothing on the weekly nothing on the 240 and as i pull up pull up our scanner here God dang it where is it all right as we pull up our scanner, I'm going to go down into the dollar, and uh, there it is. And as you can see, as an alternative viewpoint from the euro and the British pound that we looked at, we're green across the board, and there's really not a lot of reasons to start looking at this from the short side yet. Um, and, you know, again, I'm going to focus on the S&Ps when we come back from break for a little bit here and look at our breadth situation relative to all that. But, um, you know, again, there's <laughs> we're, we're going to want to see some new supply happen here on the daily or the weekly to start getting an idea that it's okay to start nibbling at all on the short side on the dollar. So that's the take on the, you know, I think it's six currencies that are combined in that particular index. All right, guys, we're going to be back after the first break here and start looking at some of the indices. We'll be right back. you feel if you had a powerful decision-making tool that has the ability to find high probability trading opportunities across multiple time frames in equities currencies and futures search no more take advantage of the best trade with the taz profile scanner trade with confidence and clarity while using the software that thousands of institutional traders rely on to help them make the best and most accurate decisions scan over a thousand equities currencies and futures instruments for high probability trading setups utilizing the taz architecture as seen on Bloomberg terminals worldwide, the TAS Profile Scanner is a benchmark technical filtering system that thousands of traders rely on, and now you can too. For a limited time, for TFNN subscribers only, we've reduced the price to just $97. That's over 75% off. Subscribers will also gain access to the December 9th workshop with John Logan. There's no obligation to pay anything. Get your 30-day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner today by signing up at TFNN.com. Check out the new look of Tiger TV. Now you can see all hosts, charts, and computer screens live in high definition. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Think or Swim, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV. Now, crystal clear in high definition, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't seen the new look of Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com. 
platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report. And make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk, charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. John takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. Uh, apologize for my mic being a little bit off this morning. We're going to try to change that. During the, during the next break, about four minutes. Taking a look at uh, what we were talking about before, looking at the dollar, uh, again, relative to the other currencies, you've got that across the green cell configuration on the dollar, across the grid, red configuration on the euro and the pound. And, uh, again, those are really not indicating that there's a lot of reasons to reverse the current trend yet, um, not a lot of reasons to pick bottoms on the euro and the pound yet, or the tops on the dollar and uh, we're going to look at, take a look at the S&Ps right now. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Got a little sick over the holidays. Uh, here's the situation we basically had at the end of last week. I don't have to tell you this. This 272, 2072 area that's been breached, uh, and we talked about that. We've had the close below. We talked about this kind of the, you know, the, the threshold of, of heading higher and kind of rethinking this a little bit on the long-term basis if we migrate below and here's the situation on the on the daily you got pretty big support around 2026 20, 90 let's just call that 2027 20, uh, that would be the kind of the wait patiently and and uh, not back up the truck but just possibly the the best battle point to look at now the way I look at these things and again we're still positive on navigator here um, is you know as we breach the 2072 you got to that that's kind of a battle point, and we actually had made a couple of points by leveraging off of that 2072 area. As we cross below, um, that's something that's kind of a wait and see. It's not it's not a bad thing to get back long above 2072, but as we start migrating down into this fair auction on our weeklies, you know, you you've got to say, okay, well, on the long term basis, we're getting back into a balanced market, but on the dailies, we're still far above. Um, 
you know, what's the next battle point? The next battle point would be crossing back above 2072 or pulling back into 2027. I know that's about a 50-point range, but, you know, a lot of things can happen in this area. And, you know, I, obviously we've, you know, been, you know, being on the short side has been a good thing in that particular move down in the last two days specifically. So this is, uh, let's see, what day was that? That's basically 1231 there. This is January 2nd, so the day before New Year's, and then the, the day after New Year's, we've had about a, God, what is that, almost a 50-point move down in the S&Ps. Um, you know, with l extremely light volume, not, not a lot of folks were around. It's kind of getting ahead of the curve there on some of the deaths. But, um, you know, this 20, 2027 area is going to be something to pay attention to, to wait for. Um, and that's kind of the way I'm looking at this, uh, not really wanting to, pick any bottoms or trying to you know continue the long term term trend up until we reach that area this euro is going to be a little bit unsettling for investors in general they're going to wake up read the paper you know look at a lot of things oh greece is folding who's next italy possibly somebody else and the euro breaking up and that's you know it's just gonna be a snowball effect as people start worrying a little bit here so i feel like we could easily get down to 2027 before you start thinking make about making any decisions and having a closed bullet 2027 is going to have to just completely just wait on the sidelines for any longs anytime soon here and wait for those borders to be crossed back above. All right. As we look at that, let's just take a look at the NASDAQ. And if you remember, and here's the long term on the NASDAQ, if you remember uh, this area of concern around, I'm just going to pull this up. Make sure I've got this right here. 4212 previous unfair lows, and that was the <clears throat> the close blow kind of retest area. And then you've got the current unfair highs at 4208. Let me make sure that's right. Yeah, 4208. So we're back down to support on the NASDAQ. It's very similar situation to the S&Ps. This is obviously a little bit weaker as far as profiles go. So again, um, trying to buy the NASDAQ at this stage since, you know, basically we have a sympathy situation in the S&Ps in general. I'm going to sit tight a little bit on the NASDAQ, not try to pick the battle here. It looks like we're migrating below and uh, waiting for the S&Ps to relax a little bit down to that 70, 20, or excuse me, 20, 2027 area is going to probably be appropriate for this. So I'm not looking at you know buying inflection points, and the scanner is providing these inflection points here to trade the Nasdaq from the long side yet. All right, we're going to take a look at a couple other global indices when we come back. Some of the things are being affected by these currency changes here, and we'll be right back, folks. of trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to tom o'brien's daily market letter market insights tom o'brien's daily newsletter market insights comes out every market day at around 9 30 a.m and provides tom's daily commentary on the broad market including the dow nasdaq and s p plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. 
Looking to diversify? Everbank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. You know what's cool? Cool. Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. I'm trying to switch some things technically here. I hope we're doing okay on the uh, sound side. Okay. Says it's much better. That's awesome. All right, guys. We took a look at the uh, couple of currencies that were hitting the uh, skids here, <laughs> and uh, I want to I want to go back to the currencies for a second. After we looked at the S and P's and the Nasdaq, and we looked at the dollar, let's take a look at the ruble. This is something that you know we've been taking a look at uh, you know over the past month after we had you know good lord reached eighty almost on the on the USD ruble or ruble USD situation. This is the devaluation of the ruble. Um, been kind of rattling around here, edging higher, crossed that border, which was again okay to be long in my opinion, around fifty five thirty. We're trading up in the almost sixty range here. This thing's getting really, really volatile. Crude oil's taking it on the chin again. <coughs> and <I've, coughs> excuse me. And the ruble uh, in my opinion, <coughs> is a buy the breakout situation every time we've got. I've gotten chopped up here a little bit doing that, but as soon as we get a close above the fifty nine ten or eleven area, um, that's going to you know we haven't had that happen yet. But we get a close above there, then we're going to be able to use that as a fence based on your appetite for risk. Forgot to mention that a while ago. Let's take a look at. Excuse me, I'm going to go down the list here and cover some of the things I like to take a look at. Now, this is, again, this has kind of been the gift that keeps on giving. It's just been amazing um, with the Fed speak. But, again, we've talked about, and here's the landscape on the 10-year for the March contract, 127.24. There's going to be a, you know, kind of a resistance lid for this. But we've talked about consistently opting out on the short trade, on the treasuries in general. And uh, this has been something that just, again, amazing 
uh, situation relative to the markets going straight up, or excuse me, the stock market going straight up. We got that kind of last signal around here, around 126.06. Okay to be long, not okay to be short, in my opinion. We've reached some targets. Actually, on we you know with that big sell off on the market uh, Friday, and we had to close above. And I want you to kind of look and see what's going on here. Close above, pull back, former support or former resistance now support, and we're moving higher. So stops can be oriented now, in my opinion. We talked about 127 being the target before, but now stops, in my opinion, can be oriented slightly below there based on your appetite for risk on the treasuries. <coughs> Again, the market may edge lower into that 2027 20, area and that would probably bode well considering the action so to speak uh on the 10 year in general as it continues to <laughs> you know economic figures come out good doesn't care fed saying that they're going to pull back on the uh gas pedal doesn't care uh so you just got to pay attention to this and flight to safety grease blah 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 all those kinds of things thrown in the mix there i uh, just don't see any other way to trade that product here's the 30 year we have reached some resistance here on the 30 year around 146 we've reached it on friday and kind of bounced off and now we're just kind of crowding that compressing up against it again with the stock market pulling back this may actually edge higher i'm not looking to sell treasuries ever in, in any 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 uh any capacity anytime soon so this will be something where it's just almost a profit taking mechanism and you'd want to see a close above here and going back in time look at this i mean this is simply amazing we could shoot for all-time highs again here's the situation we've got a new this is our march contract we don't have a lot of historics here but we've got a new box that's appeared 145 uh staying above there too so again all systems go on u.s treasury still in my opinion based on a couple of things that we've already talked about. Let's get into the golds of the world. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is, uh, you know, again, it's been a little bit uh, pain in the butt, I would say that, to try to trade gold lately. Uh, we've been wanting this climb above 1,200. You know, just, yeah, yeah just, uh, tough to to watch this not really break out based on some of the things that are going on and uh you got to take that for what it's worth we need a in my opinion we need to close above 1200 we haven't had that yet it's kind of gunning for it um i'm not a big fan of shorting gold so again this is kind of a wait and see in my opinion and we're just going to have to you know just kind of let that thing play itself out the situation on silver uh a lot of guys are looking at this. This has kind of been languishing. Not the not the long pick of the day for sure. Here's the 240s. And uh, on the dailies, we really would love to see another profile appear down here, new a new demand area, so to speak. And that would kind of, I guess, at least turn the tables a little bit on silver and give you some inflection points to look at. But, again, right now, I don't think there's uh, – great opportunities yet on silver um this is kind of a, in my opinion a wait and see situation um so again take that for what it's worth uh this is you know this is something i'm going to go into the grains for just a second here because this is something that was on my radar screen we talked about this i just want you to see how this worked out and this is kind of a similar situation from an educational standpoint as the s p's in my opinion uh, we're going to want to you know, look at this as, you know, as we were in the middle of this big wide box here, so to speak, on, on wheat last week, we talked about waiting until we got, you know, possibly down in this 583 area for a chance. Based on your appetite for us, there was a little bit of a, um, there, we went, actually went down to 574 on Friday. But as we get back above and cross this border, that was kind of a stop out for me. Um, I, I tr actually trade grains, and here we are. Here we are at 583, and then migrating back above. And again, I'm looking at this from the long side with stops down below. The U.S. dollar has obviously affected this, and let's just take a look at the dollar for a second. Again, we are coming off a little bit, slightly. Nothing to write home about. 
off the highs that we talked about from 92 earlier. And uh, that's just possibly going to help wheat move up, corn move up, and a couple other commodities that are dollar-denominated most of the time. And let's go back into those grains for a second. Let's take a look at corn. Here's the situation on corn. Um, really would love to see this get back above 404, but right now we're at a kind of a resistance area. So you've got wheat and corn sitting, you know, which are kind of a tandem trade most of the time, alternative feed situation. We really want to see corn get back above 404 to do anything with it from the long side. And right now um, we've kind of had that close below, go back and retest. But wheat's in a little bit different situation right now, and I just think uh, we've got to have a close above 404 again on corn. We talked about staying away from the short side on beans, and we had that leverage point here. At 10.32, that didn't work out. That was kind of where you kind of take the medicine on the, on the stop side and just wait and see. We're kind of back in a fair auction here on beans. These are March beans, and there's really no leverage down here. This is our daily situation. We haven't come back down into $10 a bushel, and we haven't gotten back above 10.32. Those are the big-time inflection points to pay attention to on soybeans March contract. Let's take a look at natural gas really quick. Excuse me. Hello, testing. Can you guys hear me? I think I lost sound here. Okay, for some reason I lost the uh, the speaker. All right, anyway, uh, we're taking a look at uh, natural gas here on... I'm sorry, I'm a little confused here. Okay, I'm still on. All right. Okay, so natural gas, again, we talked about uh, looking at this possibly nibbling from the 3089 area, and then we had the massive sell-off, talking about some targets above 33.333 up top. Uh, we're getting back above into that fair auction now. It seemingly might be okay to be long this product with stops below 3089 just to try something here with targets above at 33.333. And, again, I was kind of a fan of how we got new demand down here, and then we kind of migrated down below. And, and down in here, you're just doing nothing. Um, but right now, it's seemingly getting back into gear here. Uh, but that's where I'm orienting the stops around for natural gas. And we've got some you know, decent help. If you look at this from a shorter-term time frame, um, you know, you've got some situations here, 3.047 also, which is broke stride above 240s, which I like to look at, regulating a trade down or up. And that's the situation on natural gas. Let's move into the stock world for a second. I want to look at IBM. A lot of guys are trying to nibble on this or or i'm a big fan of staying short this product or this instruments 16309 we're back into the top of the box here it's not acted terribly bad in the space of this sell-off lately this is our daily on ibm but i'm still a big fan of using these inflection points to try to short this particular stock i want to take a look at gilead this is kind of continuously in the news lately um here's the weekly got that kind of power move down in the retest up there of that inflection point 97.40 and that was coinciding with that 97.72 and we've kind of come off of there the targets down below in my opinion are still 90.66 on this stock on the short side kind of showing itself a little bit here on gilead we also want to take a look at uh, verizon Excuse me, Verizon. Okay, here we go. All right, so again, we kind of identified this as something to put on the radar screen from the short side. We never got back up into uh, the, the box that was created last week, 48.41. And now we're back into this below the fair auction on the top on 47.22. So again, I'm looking at this from the short side with stops above. I think this thing could drift lower. We've got to take a look at some of the 
some of the bellwethers here and how they've acted in the face of this sell-off. And here's the weekly on Apple. And again, kind of just rattling around in the, in the uh, balanced area here in the long term. And we've held up still, uh, even as of last Friday here, kind of going back and, and then not closing below the fair auction here. 109, excuse me, let me state that again. 108.84 is going to be the inflection point to pay attention to on Apple. And that's the way I'm looking at this particular stock. Basically, you know, this is uh, something that could drive the market down, but it's seemingly held in there. We're trading 108.72. It looks like pre-market. So, again, we're sitting right below this 108.84 pre-market. These daily bar charts are not reflecting, you know, pre-market uh, activity right now. But, uh, again, 108.84 is going to be the inflection point to pay attention to long above, in my opinion, Market could drag this down a little bit in general. Again, 2027 is going to be that thing to pay attention to when it comes to looking at uh, Apple. Excuse me. So, uh, I'm going to look at Tesla really, really quick. Here's the situation we had a new supply area, or excuse me, new uh, balance area up here. 199.38, so we've got that 200 sitting down below. In my opinion, this is probably going to drift lower into the 200 area. We've reached, uh, as of Friday, we kind of got back into the balanced area. So, again, I'm looking for this to drift a little bit lower on Tesla, start catching a bit a little bit lower, and the market could drag this thing down also. i got to take a look at Amazon. We had the more sales I guess, by this particular company over the holidays than they've ever had. Here's the situation on Amazon. Here's the 30509. I've been relatively bearish on this. And, uh, you know, just sitting tight with this stock and waiting for breakouts below 30509, I think is going to be in order on this particular thing. We're trading 30677 pre-market. So that's the situation on Amazon. i got to go into crude oil for a little bit here before we go to our – Next break. Where's that? Yeah, I mean, this is... Uh, oof. Oof, oof, oof. Okay, so, again, a, a good example of... And let me just blow this up a little bit. A good example of using inflection points here. Again, Friday we had that... Let me just make sure we're on the part here. Friday we had that run-up back up into that 55.11. We talked about this last week, actually, waiting patiently until we got any rallies in the 55.11. On Friday we got into 55.11. Don't you just kind of notice that the high print Friday was 55.11, and that was the leverage point we were looking for. And now we're five dollars a barrel lower. On the what a nice little situation. We'll be right back, folks. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. 
Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Masters Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before, for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Catch Steve Rhodes as he teaches techniques on technical analysis using pattern recognition, celestial charting, Fibonacci, and other tools. The Trader's Edge, next on TFNN. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. I'm just going to take our scanner and pull up some things that are looking relatively ripe still, even in the face of the pullback. I'm going to look at above the box on two different time frames, weeklies and dailies. And as you can see, you've got a, a, a decent set of candidates here, General Motors, um, namely, uh, looking down the list here, 3M, uh, Waste Management. These are stocks still sitting above. There's quite a few stocks sitting here. This is uh, a decent group. Therefore, looking at the breadth situation, even though we've had the short terms turn, these 240s turned a little early. So got daily and weekly. This is really a really good setup, in my opinion, for that 2027 possible, uh, you know, wait and see bounce point here. I'm going to take a look at General Motors as we look at this really quick, just to give a kind of put something on the radar screen here. Here's the situation on General Motors. We had that close above last week, as you can see, 3484, and I'm looking at 3424 as that leverage point here. This thing's kind of hanging in here. Here's the daily situation, obviously well above profiles here and sitting almost on all-time, or not all-time highs, but, but recent highs. I'm also going to take a look at, as I pull this back up, something else is sitting kind of... You know, rider systems, I'm going to take a look at that. It's sitting right at the weekly unfair highs. Got a new daily uh, 240 supply appearing. I'm going to opt out on that. Let me just find another candidate. Uh, Constellation Brands, new supply on the 240 attempting to appear. I'm going to stay away from that. Um, let's just look down the list here. Just going to 
kind of peruse down the list here just as a, a pre-market. Oh, God, I'm stuck here. Okay. P. Okay, American Eagle, Eagle Power, obviously been a strong stock. And this is another kind of education thing. We had a new profile up here down below in the long term uh, about a month and a half ago. And as price action was up here, had that profile up here down below and relatively thin. That's a very bullish situation in general. AEP, we pulled back a little bit on the, on the situation on the market pullback. We've got an inflection point here on AEP sitting at 6102. You got something to focus on here. And then you've got this 5926 sitting here too. So these are two, the two inflection points to pay attention to on American Electric Power Company. And you know where the technical damage is going to start on this particular type of stock below 5926. Just to give a couple of stock names here. And uh, all right. So to recap, <clears throat> we're going to go back into the S and P's. Take a look at what's going on here. And we're headed lower, folks, 2035. When we started talking about this today, we're, I think we're around 2044, right when the show started. And uh, let's see, yeah, about, about 2044. So we're about 10 points lower. 2027 is that big number. Why? This is where we're sitting. 2027 rounded off down here. That's going to be the kind of, you know, if you, you got, you know, four down days in a row here uh, as it stands right now. And this is going to wash out a couple more people on the opening around 9:30, and I think that's the uh, possibly the buy point here at 2027 to try to catch a bid on the S&Ps. Thanks, guys. Hope you had a good uh, holiday, and I uh, hope you guys have a good day trading today. We'll be back again tomorrow. Thanks very much. Steve Rhodes is next. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFNN.